To many, she's the darling of the golden days of Nollywood. Her smiles and emotionally charged movie performances have earned her recognition at home and abroad. Her name is Stella Damasus, also known as Stella Damascus by her stubborn Nigerian fans who, despite her countless attempts to get them to say her name right, has stuck to what they chose. Stella was born in the vibrant city of Benin on the 24th of April, 1978. Blessed amongst women, she is with four sisters and, of course, her two beautiful daughters. Originally from Asaba Delta State, she explains the origin of her surname, which her family adopted during the Nigerian Civil War. My, my original surname was Ojuku, but that, that changed during the war, during the Biafran War, oh. where my people were attacked in Asaba because they thought that it was the same as a seasoned thespian with a Bachelor in Arts in Theatre Arts from the prestigious University of Lagos, Stella describes her foray into the world of movies as accidental. She recounts how she landed her first feature in 1995 from an impromptu audition for the movie, Abused. So I didn't plan to be an actor. A man came to my house one day and I was like, oh, I'm going for an audition. And then as we were about to leave, someone saw me and said, have you auditioned? I said, no, I haven't. I didn't come here for that. And he said, oh, well, I like the way you sound and I like your look. Come in and read. And I read what? <laughs> Spurred on by the success of her first role, she acted in many other Nollywood classics starring in over 70 movies. Despite her busy schedule, Stella still pursued her first love, music, and released her first album, The Alternative, in 2016. Somewhere on the other side of town, there's a young boy praying. 17 The house is small and you complain when someone else just wants to leave Her works have earned recognition at home and abroad and cemented her name as one of Nollywood's most prominent practitioners. Stella married Jaya Bodhari at 21, a decision she says was to check herself from being carried away by the fame she already had. We have a tendency to be crazy and do whatever we like yeah. because we could get away with anything we could travel all over the world we could get people to like us like this yeah. we had money to throw around if i don't have that family you need to check me i don't know what i would have become when her husband passed a few years later stella found herself alone with two young children whose lives she kept away from the media until a few years ago when they appeared on the cover of her magazine adiva with her in 2005 stella received critical acclaim for her role in the movie the widow Many believed the movie was her life story because of her riveting performance. The movie portrayed the inhumane cultural rights a widow was subjected to at the death of her husband. She explains the origin of the movie and says the movie was shot before her husband passed. I, I did Widows months before my husband passed away. Um, so And I, I saw the lady that I played and so when the movie came out, the movie came out after my husband had died. Stella remarried in 2007 to Emeka Nzeribe, three years after losing her husband. But the marriage ended eight months later on a mutual agreement by both parties. In recognition of her works, the screen diva was nominated for Best Actress in a leading role at the African Movie Academy Awards in 2009. She won the award for Best Actress at the Nigeria Entertainment Awards in 2007. She won another award for Best Actress for the movie Two Brides and a Baby at the Golden Icons Academy Awards in Houston, Texas in 2012. As an advocate for social justice and a philanthropist, Stella has worked with several organizations including Globally Igniting Africa GIA, a non-profit organization as their women's ambassador, Project Alert to fight against domestic violence, Women for Africa as an ambassador. She has also worked with WFP World Food Program to help the people of Liberia and supports Lamborghini say no to crime. Still, on a quest to see her country work, she worked as an ambassador for the NDLEA, Nigerian Drug Law Enforcement Agency. She worked with an organization in Cameroon that supports cancer patients. Stella's advocacy for the rights of women and children gained national and international prominence in 2014 when she frankly spoke against the marriage of Senator Yarima, a 53-year-old man, to a 13-year-old child. I am also worried about the fact that we are making it seem like he is 
a hero of a certain group of people and he is not and all of these have stated and stipulated that no child should be considered marriageable until she is the age of 18 and after seven years since her marriage ended the beautiful mother of two found love again with it she found herself at the center of controversies in an industry where it was nearly impossible not to be controversial between 2013 and 2014 she was embroiled in a controversial love triangle with her now ex-husband Daniel and his former wife Doris Simeon. Stella maintained a tight lip throughout the controversies but later spoke on the issue in an interview. She maintained that she only got into a relationship with Daniel after his marriage had ended with his ex-wife and debunked rumors that she snatched him and his son from her. If I marry 10, it concerns you. That's what I used to say. If I have 50 husbands, how does that affect you? Two people come together, it's not working, they go their separate ways. This one meets somebody, all of a sudden, it is that somebody that is the problem. Did anybody ever ask, what went wrong? Why would a man pick up his son and walk away from a marriage? A published author's book, Mama, It's a Girl, tells the story of a young girl whose determination changed the course of history for her people. She is a big supporter of women and recently dedicated the whole of March to promoting women-owned businesses on her social media handles. Never one not to have a say, Stella expresses her opinions and thoughts and interacts with her fans through her blogs, social media pages and her two very popular podcasts, Excuse My African, a weekly podcast about life through the eyes of a misrepresented and misunderstood African girl abroad and Daily Dose, a daily podcast to share experiences and give daily boosts to get you going.